Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green deck titled Justice League, as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's a collection of legendary creatures, in fact, the only non-legendary creature in the deck is Merleaf Pixie to give us a bit of a ramp and mana fixing, and one of the build-around cards in the deck is Kolvori, God of Kinship, a 4-mana 2-4 legendary creature god, saying as long as we control 3 or more legendary creatures, Kolvori gets plus 4, plus 2 and has Vigilance, so it turns into a 6-6, six, six and for one and a green we can tap Kolvori to look at the top six cards of our library and reveal a legendary creature card from among them and put it into our hand so we've got a pretty high chance of finding some action and then we also have the flexibility of playing the Ring Heart Crest, a 2-mana legendary artifact that as it enters the battlefield we have to choose a creature type and then taps for green mana that we can only spend to cast a creature spell of the chosen type or a legendary creature spell. So given that almost every creature in the deck is a legendary creature, it doesn't matter all that much what we name with the Ring Heart Crest, although it's usually better to name Fairy, although we can get pretty creative. So the flexibility here of playing the Crest or Colvori is quite nice, especially if we draw multiple copies. And and then another build around card is Tyrite Sanctum, a land that taps for colorless, but for two mana we can tap Tyrite Sanctum and then target a legendary creature becomes a god in addition to its other types and we can put a plus one plus one counter on it, can just keep activating this as much as we want. And then for four mana we can tap Tyrite Sanctum and sacrifice it to put an indestructible counter on target god, so that's also a nice one that we have access to. And then another card worth mentioning is a Sika, God of the Tree, a 3-mana 1-4 legendary creature god with Vigilance, and it taps for 1 mana of any color, saying other legendary creatures we control have Vigilance and can tap for 1 mana of any color. So that gives us a nice mana boost and quite a bit of mana fixing too, to potentially cast the Prismatic Bridge, a 5-mana legendary artifact that at the beginning of our upkeep reveals cards from the top of our library until we reveal a creature or planeswalker card, and we can put that on the battlefield for free. So if we have a Nasika in play it becomes much easier to cast Prismatic Bridge, otherwise we can also count on the World Tree to potentially fix our mana to help us play the Prismatic Bridge, and then the extra mana that Esika and the other legendary creatures provide is quite useful, especially alongside Kinon, Bonder Prodigy, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two legendary creature human druid, saying whenever we tap a non-land permanent for mana, add one mana of any type that permanent produced, so that's going to be very helpful alongside the Ringheart Crest, but it's also going to double the mana that Merleaf Pixie produces, as well as all the mana we can make with Esika, which is especially helpful if we have a lot of legendary creatures in play all generating additional mana, and then we can spend all that mana to potentially activate Kinon's ability for 7 mana, where we get to look at the top 7 cards of our library and put a non-human creature card from among them onto the battlefield. So we've got plenty of mana sinks here between Kinon and Kolvori, and plenty of ways to generate card advantage. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, since we are an all-creature deck, we also get to play Omori the Collector as our companion, so that's another way to potentially spend our mana in the late game. We've got two copies of Jolrael, Monvuli Recluse, not the best card in the deck since we don't have a ton of ways to draw cards, but Jolrael and... Toski do have a secret crush on each other, since Toski can generate a lot of extra cards, which will trigger Jolrael, making a bunch of cat tokens, which in turn will make it easier to keep enabling Toski to draw additional cards, so those two pair nicely with each other. And then we can also activate Jolrael's ability for 6 mana, and until end of turn, creatures we control have base power and toughness XX, where X is the number of cards in our hand, so that's a nice way to potentially close out the game after making a few cat tokens. Then we already mentioned Kinon and Merleaf Pixie. Merleaf Pixie, also a nice one alongside Toski, which we'll get to in a second. Two copies of Cosima, God of Voyage. So another god we can potentially search up with the World Tree. We've got a few gods total with Cosima, Esika, Colvori, and Alrund that we can all search up with the World Tree if we ever get the mana to activate it, which is usually only going to happen if we have Esika, especially alongside Kinon in play, to generate additional mana. So Cosima, a 2-4, that at the beginning of our upkeep we can potentially exile and send on an adventure, and then when we play additional lands we can potentially turn that into extra card advantage to eventually get Cosima back out of exile, and we also have the flexibility of playing the Omen Keel, a 2-mana 3-3 vehicle that can help us find additional lands, and then the card draw from Cosima can also potentially synergize with Jolrael. We've got two copies of Baron, Tolarian Archmage, a 3-mana 2-2 two -two legendary creature human wizard, and when Baron enters a battlefield we can return up to one other target creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand, so that gives us a little bit of interaction 
interaction since otherwise our deck is just a pile of creatures so having a bit of interaction is always useful and at the beginning of our end step if a permanent was put into our hand from the battlefield this turn we also get to draw a card so we can potentially bounce our own creature to generate a bit of card advantage which can also synergize with Jolrile. Then we've got our four copies of Asika, two copies of Toski, Bearer of Secrets, a four mana 1-1 one, one legendary creature squirrel with indestructible that cannot be countered and Toski has to attack each combat if able and whenever a creature we control deals combat damage to a player we get to draw a card so the opponent has to make sure they can keep blocking Toski over and over again but Toski also pairs nicely with our evasive creatures like Merleaf Pixie that have an easier time connecting with the opponent as well as cards like Questing Beast which is up next the four mana four four with Vigilance, Death Touch and Haste and a whole host of other abilities that'll give you as a reading assignment. Then we also have two copies of Alrund, God of the Cosmos, which we also have the flexibility of playing as Haka, Whispering Raven at two mana, a 2-3 Flying Bird, and whenever it deals combat damage to a player, we return it to its owner's hand and then get to Scry 2, which also helps us to enable Alrund, God of the Cosmos, a 5 mana 1-1, one, one, that gets plus 1 plus 1 for each card in our hand, and each foretold card we own in exile, no foretell cards in this deck. And at the beginning of our end step, we choose a card type, which is either going to be creature or land in our case, and reveal the top two cards of our library and put all the cards revealed this way of the chosen type into our hand so it can also provide a nice bit of card advantage and then finally we've got two copies of Voringlex Monstrous Raiders, 6 mana 6-6 six, six with Trample and Haste, that gives us additional counters, which isn't super relevant except for maybe Tyrite, Sanctum and Cosima, which also enters the battlefield with plus 1 plus 1 counters, but more importantly it shuts down opposing counters so opposing Planeswalkers come into play with half the amount of loyalty, the opponent can get a single plus 1 counter on their creature and opposing Sagas also stop from working since they don't get any counters and then we've got two copies of Kogla, the Titan Ape, which gives us some more interaction as a 7-6 creature that when it enters a battlefield fights up to one target creature we don't control and whenever Kogla attacks we can destroy an artifact or enchantment defending player controls and for one in a green we can return a human we control to its owner's hand and then Kogla gains indestructible until end of turn so that's also a neat combo with Baron which we can potentially pick back up and then replay Baron to bounce another creature once again and then finally two copies of Koma Cosmos Serpent as our curve topper 7 mana 6-6 six, six, that cannot be countered and at the beginning of each up Upkeep, including the opponent's upkeep, we get to make a 3-3 blue serpent creature token named Koma's Coil and we can sacrifice another serpent at any point to either tap target permanent and its activated abilities cannot be activated or Koma gains indestructible until end of turn, so that's a nice bit of removal insurance as well. And then going over the mana base, we already mentioned four copies of Tyrite Sanctum, two copies of the World Tree, which can fix our mana for the Prismatic Bridge, but can also potentially be sacrificed to search up all the gods in our deck. Then we've got four copies of Fabled Passage, providing some fixing, can also provide two landfall triggers for Cosima. And then we've got a few Triomes, we've got a split of two copies of Catria Triome and two copies of Zagoth Triome, to potentially make it easier to hardcast the Prismatic Bridge if we don't have the World Tree in play. And then we've got four of the blue green pathway, four basic forests, two copies of Castle Garenbrig, which can be useful with the ramping out Vorinclex or Kogla especially, and then two islands. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. Turn to Kinon, don't have any mana creatures to go with it, but can maybe send Cosima on a voyage and we've got plenty of lands to go with it. Let's see what we're up against. Turn one planes. And a fairy guide mother, so white's aggressive deck. Ooh, there's Colvori. So I do have the option of playing the Ringheart Crest as well. Which would make two mana with Kinon in play. Which can ramp into Kogla, which might be better than playing a four mana Colvori. So between Kinon and playing Crest. I think I'll still play Crest just because we have a few 4-drops that we might want to play instead. And then we'll name Fairy for the Merleaf Pixie. Just in case. Duxos, Blast by the Sun. That's alright. And a Sika, also a nice one, so we can go Kinon if we tap our lanes and then still play a Sika. And 
And now Kinnon and Asika both time for two mana. So we'll have all the mana in the world to play Kogla. And start activating Kinnon. Opponent Mono White. And Glass Casket sadly going to deal with one of our creatures, Asika. So that takes away most of our mana acceleration. Although we can still play Kogla here thanks to Kinnon plus Crest. And then Kogla can eventually free Asika from the casket. And we'll hit for two. Kinnon's also a human, so we can potentially pick it back up with Kogla to make it indestructible. Alright, Giant Killer kills Kogla, so some nice back and forth here. Another Kusima. So, I guess we'll play both Kusima and the Omen Kill. Could also put Umori in hands. Maybe that's better than putting an Omen Kill out there. So we're still at 15, our late game is going to be quite powerful once we get a few extra lands going. So I don't hate my spot. Another casket deals with Kinnon, but we have a backup. And we'll take one. We'll send Cosima on an adventure. And a backup Isika. Alright. So, if I play Kinnon first, I can still tap this for 4 mana, play Umori. Maybe that's better than playing Esika. And the next turn I can play Esika, tap Umori and Kinnon for 4 mana total, which is going to be enough to activate Kinnon. And we'll name Creature. I guess Asika getting the discount from Umori also gives us one more mana to work with. So what's next for our opponents? They're not hitting us for a ton of damage so far. But they might have a decent late game with cards like Elspeth Conqueror's Death. Maybe Heliod's Suncrowned. Alright, another giant killer for Umori. Ring Crest will have to activate first, since it doesn't have for activated abilities. Play Isika. And then Kinnon taps for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I guess we're still one short. Um, yeah, I mean, that's probably still fine here. Don't think I'm playing the Omen Keel. Doesn't seem necessary. And then we'll add another counter to Cosima for now. And then pass a turn. Could have also played Cosima to then send her on a voyage while the other Cosima is still in exile. Now Heraldic Banner will increase the pressure quite a bit. But uh, yeah, the World Tree is going to be a nice one too, as we can potentially use the activated ability to get all our gods. Although for now, probably just going to activate Kinnon. Don't think we're attacking first, so let's just activate Kinnon and see what's up. Could also play World Tree, I suppose, to then uh, get our Cosima back from exile. I think we'll start here. And picked up... well, Coma seems good. We could see another giant killer at instant speed. This time I think I'll decline. 
Alright. And then... Probably no point in playing another Kusima for now. So if our opponent has another Giant Killer, they can potentially destroy Koma before we generate a Serpent to make it indestructible. And Swift Response instead, alright, that also works. Still get our 3-3 Serpent at least. And we've got a lot of legendary creatures that tap for 2 mana, so... I'm looking at this world tree, and it's looking quite tempting. Kusima will stick around. And we'll get some more gods in play. Get to search up Kolvori and Elrond. And I guess we might as well untap the creatures that are currently tapped. So that looks good. And I can attack with Kwasima as well as a Serpent. Opponent can tap one of our creatures with Giant Killer still. And then Kolvori is also nice mana sink. Vigilance means we can attack with Kolvori and still activate it. And we also have Kinom as another mana sink, so... An embarrassment of riches, Alrond gonna name creature. And picks up two more. Questing Beast, another nice one. So our opponent's gonna have to close out the game pretty quickly here. Flying creatures could get the job done if they've got some more Fairy Guide Mothers to give their creatures flying. They might be able to sneak in a win. Elspeth can make some tokens. Heroes, rally to Although Questing Beast is perfect here to potentially take out Elspeth. As we draw another one. So play Questing Beasts. And attack all. All our creatures have Vigilance thanks to Asika. Alright, so... Can activate Kinon on the way out. Get another Coma. And this time we have a Serpent to protect it. And yeah, I think we can let damage happen. Opponent's dead. And Questing Beast was about to take out Elspeth too. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent opening hand. Turn to Merleaf Pixie. Can play Kusima or Isika on three. Punch up an island right away. And our points got a snow covered plains. Yeah, I'm probably gonna run out Kosima. The sooner the better. So we can start drawing extra cards once she returns from her adventure. So her point on black white clerics. Well, Vorinclex is an interesting twist. If I play a Sika, next turn we could already play Vorinclex, which also stops Cleric from accumulating plus one plus one counters. So, yeah, we'll play a Sika here, I think. And then we can hit for two. A Righteous Valkyrie. Alright, so they've got a 3 3 Cleric, but we've got a 6 6 Vorinclex. Also, gonna have Vigilance. And can still attack here. Another Righteous Valkyrie. No counter on Cleric, but they do gain quite a bit of life. 
So now they could potentially triple Blanc for Inclex. But now they attacked, so they can no longer do that. Kogla, nice pickup too. So I can just Kogla fight one of the Valkyries. Hit for six. Another cleric. Foreign clanks doing a ton of work here. So we're at 16. We've got Colvori for card advantage. Interesting. Pyre of Heroes. Not sure what our opponent's gonna search up, but uh, let's see. Opponent's at 16. Don't think we quite have lethal, but can definitely deal quite a bit of damage. And then we'll start by attacking with Kogla and Vorinclex. Can take out Pyre of Heroes with Kogla too, because why not? Could potentially play around a sweeper, but it doesn't seem like our opponent's that type of deck. Play Kusima. And then could hang on to Fabled Passage to enable Kusima, although I think I'll play it just in case we need to make Kogla indestructible. Assuming we have a human to return, I guess we don't. They're all gods. Opponent drew a lot of Righteous Valkyries this game, but yeah, for Inclex on turn 4, stopping Cleric from accumulating any plus 1 counters. And her opponent explodes, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand can ramp out a turn 3 Questing Beast. Double Jaw Rails, not super exciting. Although we do have Castle Garenbrick to potentially help us activate Jolrel a turn sooner. So I'll try it. This hand would benefit from anything that helps us draw cards. So Toski, for instance, would pair nicely with Pixie and Jolrel. Facing Snow Covered Swamp and now Faceless Haven and Maze Mind Tome. So probably a more controlling black deck. Could even be Mono Black. Opponent is going to scry with Tomb. Alright, Skolvori could be nice. Probably still going to run out Pixie here. Now we could make it more likely that we ramp out Questing Beast if we play Ring Heart Crest, but it feels like I need to hang on to Kolvori as a way to generate card advantage. Now for opponents a black control deck, they're going to have plenty of answers for Kolvori, so that might not quite work out. So turn 3 could be unexciting if Merleaf Pixie dies. Instead, our opponent's got an Inscription of Rune, making us discard 2. Well, so happens I don't mind discarding our two copies of Jolrel. And then I'm just gonna run out Questing Beast and Smash for 4. Start applying some pressure. Koma, another nice one we can ramp into. Extinction event on even could be pretty rough, but it's not like playing Colvori would have been much more helpful. Alright, Soul Shatter on Questing Beast instead. At least we got our 4 damage in. There's nothing useful I can do with Castle Garenbrig, since we need blue mana to play Pixie. So we're just gonna hit for 2, play Colvori. And then hope we get to untap with her. Given that our opponent has cards like Soul Shatter in the deck, it's not guaranteed that Koma will win us the game on the spot, otherwise there's an argument for just playing Crest to help us ramp towards the 7 mana Serpent. Oh, 
Heartless Sang deals with Colvori. So I'm gonna draw a card. And there's Kinnon, which can generate additional mana alongside Pixie. So, yeah, I guess we'll play Kinnon. Could also put Umori in hand this turn instead. Although, I think I just play Kinnon plus Pixie and then hope our opponent doesn't have a board wipe. So we can play Koma next turn. Or start activating Kinnon. And if they take out Kinnon, I can still play Koma with a land. Castle plus an extra land doesn't necessarily do it since we need double blue for Koma. So if I sacrifice Pixie, then next turn I can still activate Kinnon. So that seems good. Because we can use Castle for abilities. And we even drew the land. So now I can play Coma, which seems even better. Alright, let's see if they have instant speed removal. Could still have a soul shatter. Turgrid God of Frights. Alright, that's a scary card. Especially if they can follow that up with a Soul Shatter. Although 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I can put my opponent to 1 here. And Tosky is a nice pickup too, so. I can sacrifice our summoning sick token to tap Turgrid. Play Tosky. Attack. Draw a bunch of cards. And the token being sacrificed. Doesn't uh, go under the opponent's control with Turgrid. And our opponent concedes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And yeah, this hand's got a lot of potential. Kinnon and Esika are best buddies. And can ramp into an Elrond. And then Tarite Sanctum can also combo with her various gods. Facing some sort of Elfie ramp deck with just Barrow Sentinel. Run out Kinnon. Could also run out Haka for now. I think I would rather still play Kinnon here. Even though we can eventually pick up our bird again. Could be awkward if our opponent has multiple Sentinels to block it. Right, so our opponent on some sort of Bant deck, Masked Vandal, so it could be a party deck, as this is a rogue, now a shapeshifter, and a warrior. So it could be a Winota deck as well, for all we know. Although, I guess uh, Changelings aren't the best alongside Winota, since they also count as humans. We're now to Sika, and given that we picked up a second copy, we can potentially play the world tree as well. Now I could also run out Haka here, now that Kinnon taps for mana, just to have an extra creature we don't mind blocking with potentially. And then next turn I can attack and then uh, still play Elrond. It's also potentially more mana to activate Kinnon's ability. Another Sentinel. So we have a lot of options between playing Alrund, potentially activating Kinnon, or playing Prismatic Bridge. Can even consider using Tyrite Sanctum. So, what makes more sense here? I guess we could attack with Haka and then activate Kinnon, so we can still tap this for mana. And then let's see, four, five, six, I would still have one creature back to block. That's reasonable. I think I like that more than playing Prismatic Bridge here, since that'll give us a bit more board presence, which seems important. So, let us attack with Haka. I'll go full control just in case. And then let damage happen. 
And in response to the trigger, we want to tamp this for mana. And activate Kinon. And picked up Toski or Kolvori. I guess Kolvori makes a little bit more sense here. And then Kogla seems great. And then I can potentially put Omori in hand. I think I would rather just have uh, the extra blocker could also play Haka again. So again, ton of options here. Yeah, I guess we can replay Haka. And then upkeep, I'll put a stop in case I want to activate Kinon to hit Kogla. Another Sentinel. And yeah, let's spin the wheel. And yeah, Kogla seems good. We'll fight maybe one of the Sentinels so Haka can keep attacking. Take our draw step. Cosima's nice too. So many options. Now maybe play Prismatic Bridge. Opponent does have enough power to potentially triple or quadruple block Colvori and take her out. So yeah, let's just chill this turn and play Bridge. Although I guess never mind, we don't quite have the mana to cast it since these can only make two mana of the same color. So I guess this turn we can attack with Haka. And we'll just keep Kolvori back to use the ability. So Haka deals damage. And then I could still tap this for mana if I want. Although I'm not sure if I'm going to use it for anything. Questing Beast, Tyrite Sanctum. I guess we don't mind the Questing Beast. And I could activate Colvori now. I guess it's not bad. And pick up Questing Beast. Alright, sure. And then we'll replay Haka. So all this mana from a Seek and Kinon coming in handy. Opponent still hasn't found any payoff cards for party. We see Bears of Lejara, which is pretty nice with our shapeshifters, but Kogla can just take it out after we attack, and our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a good looking hand. Got quite a few options on turn two already. Can play Ring Hearts or we can play Haka. For now, we'll get this tapped castle out of the way. Facing a red green land destruction deck. So the extra mana from Crest might come in handy. Looks like Teamer. Turn to Omen Kill. So. How do we want to sequence here? Could go turn two Crest and then turn three ramp out Toski or play Sika and then ramp out Elrond. So got quite a few options. I think I like playing Crest here. And then we'll name Fairy just in case. Bonecrusher Giant has a 4-3 to crew the Omen Kill. Yeah, I think playing Toski makes sense. Because that way we'll be able to block the Omen Kill next turn. Although now that we picked up Kinon, Esika also goes up in value. And Esika can still block the Omen Kill. And then next turn I could go Kinon. And then Esika taps for double the mana. Toski also nice on with... A Sika in play since we can potentially use Toski for mana instead of having it attack without dealing any damage. So yeah, let's go with a Sika. And 
and hope that she survives. If her opponents still cruise Omen Keel, I guess it could imply another Stomp from Bonecrusher. They picked up Tyrite Sanctum, which might have some synergy in their deck if they have Cosima, so it's just a giant attacking for four, we'll take it. Alrighty. Well, we're actually pretty close to casting Prismatic Bridge here as well. We've got black mana, blue mana, green mana. This can make a fourth color. So this turn I can play Kinon. And then these will both tap for double mana, which would be enough to still play something else. And what's that going to be? Don't mind Alrund. I technically should attack with a Sika first. There's probably no harm in doing so. So we can play Alrund. And then, I don't know if I want to show them Sanctum. I guess they wouldn't be able to use their land destruction just yet. Name creature. And we hit the jackpot here with two creatures. Alright, starting to like my position. Isika makes a ton of mana with Kinnon. And next turn I could play Prismatic Bridge if I want. Toski can start drawing extra cards. And we've got the Toski, Jolryl, plus Pixie, Synergy. Lotus Cobra, always scary. Can generate a ton of extra mana with Landfall. Although nothing else. Alright, so... If Alrunt attacks, her opponent could crew Omen Keel, double block with Omen Keel and Giant, so... That's maybe not a trade I want to make at the moment. Although I guess we also have Tyrite Sanctum to make it indestructible, so maybe I should go ahead and attack first. Opponent takes it. Now, of course, if we play Toski first, we would have been able to potentially draw an extra card there. But I think the plan is to get Prismatic Bridge in play. And then... Let's see here. Should still be able to activate Kinon 2. So... Play an extra land. Activate Kinon. And hit Questing Beast, I guess. Alright, not a bad turn. Name Creature. Although we hit two lands this time. So we've got a ton of card draw engines going here between Prismatic Bridge, Alruns, still have Toski. And we're pretty far ahead on board. But it just takes one Ugin the Spirit Dragon to wipe that all away. So hopefully that doesn't happen. Maybe should have saved uh, a few creatures in hand just for that event. Uh, it's going to be Genesis Ultimatum. Hopefully no Ugin. Alright, I'll take it. Just some creatures. Lotus Cobra makes more mana. And Prismatic Bridge hits. Don't have any enormous creatures in the deck, but we got pretty lucky to hit a coma there. Alright, so... Now what? I can attack with 
Alrond, which can become indestructible with Sanctum before playing my lands, or I can play Toski and maybe prompt a Trump block. Questing Beast would just trade, although I guess we can also use Sanctum potentially, but I can't use it on both Questing Beast and Alrond. Although maybe it's fine to just trade for Bone Crusher. Yeah, I guess we'll send both here. And then we'll save one. Double blocks Alrund. And single blocks Questing Beast, so... Probably just gonna put Bone Crusher first and then make Alrund indestructible with Tyrite Sanctum. Now I can just put a plus one counter on him instead. They could still have another Bone Crusher in hand, I guess, to finish him off, but we'll see. And then... Probably just gonna end up activating Kinon. There's always the concern of an Ugin, but I guess we'll just activate it now. Alright, I guess this is a bit of a miss. So probably better off declining. And then... I guess we can still play Pixie. Oh, I guess I forgot about that interaction. Alrond having damage and playing a land out meant he died. So I guess we should not have done anything here. And now I gave up the extra Alrund with Kinnon. So that was a bit of a mistake. Although we should be able to recover. Alright. So got our Serpent. So now if Ugin shows up, he'll be forced to minus 7, which deals with Koma. But at least they won't have an Ugin in play. And now that we have Pixie in play, we've got an extra flyer to go with Toski, so... There's a little bit of upside still. Waking the Troll is gonna take out our Triome instead of Tyrite Sanctum. So yeah, last turn, I guess, playing the land plus Pixie would have been okay had we just taken the other Alrund with Kinon's ability. Alright, they do have also a way to deal with Tyrite Sanctum, so that makes sense. Yeah, Waking the Trolls could be scary if it reaches a third chapter and our opponent gets to make a bunch of trolls. Although we do have Koma to hopefully close out the game in the meantime. Prismatic Bridge can find more creatures too. So we should be just fine. And Vorinclex is going to stop the saga right in its tracks. So that's the perfect answer. So, how about we get pretty aggressive here? If I tap Bone Crusher, they're just gonna crew Omen Kill with it. Um, but then I guess I can tap something else still. Could also activate Kinon. And our opponent's just gonna scoop it up here as they see the Rinding on the Wall. Sweet, so yeah, all our synergies coming together here. The mana from Kinon and Esika, all the activated abilities providing card advantage, and then our Curve Toppers, Koma, Vorinclex, having a very big impact on the game as well. So yeah, overall, Blue-Green, Justice League, a pretty fun way to make use of all those legendary creatures from Kaldheim, so I recommend it as a fun casual deck. But for now, I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.